Joining me right now is Daniel Burbank, who's the commander of Expedition 30 aboard the International Space Station. And, Commander, thank you so much for joining us today. What's the weather like in space today? Actually, the weather's beautiful. It's always clear. Temperature's just great. Uh, no humidity, hardly ever any rain or any snow or anything like that. It's actually wonderful. And it's great to look at the Earth from here, from this vantage point. Now, Dan, you've had the advantage of having gone up in the space shuttle a couple of times. This last time you came up in the Soyuz. What's the difference between the two in terms of the way that it feels for you as an astronaut? Well, as far as the, the sensations that you have, the acceleration you feel, the vibrations of the vehicle, um, it's very similar. Uh, it takes about the same amount of time to go from zero miles an hour to 17,000 in a space shuttle as it does in a Soyuz. The Soyuz is quite a bit smaller. So from the crew perspective, inside, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit it's a little bit cramped, I guess you could say, at least in the descent module, the part of the, the capsule that we ride in on the way uphill. Um, after we get on orbit for a, an hour or two and we've had some time to check out the systems, we can kind of stretch our legs a little bit in the uh, the on-orbit module, the, the, the round part of the, uh, the Soyuz vehicle that you've probably seen in, in diagrams and pictures on board Space Station. But on the way uphill, you're snug, you're very, you're strapped in as tight as can be, and, uh, and for a guy my size, um, it's uh, about as small as I could handle, I think. Much smaller than that, it would be much, much room for my feet. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's talk about the projects you're working on right now. Obviously, our sights are now set uh, beyond the International Space Station, potentially to the moon, and then to Mars and beyond. What kind of projects are you working on right now that will help us in our future endeavors? Yeah, I think one of the most important things, at least in the in the American science, the U.S. sponsored science on board space station, is to to answer the questions that we need to answer to be able to safely send a crew to Mars. And it's how to keep humans healthy, safe, productive in space. There's a lot of things that are an awful lot of fun about being in weightlessness, but they also have some um, some physiological hazards to us. We quickly adapt to the environments we're in, and we quickly adapt to weightlessness, and that means we don't have, our hearts don't have to be as strong, our bones don't have to be as strong, muscles, all the rest, and there's other changes as well. Those would all be fine if we were going to live in space forever in weightlessness, but if we're going to go to Mars, we want to land and be functional. If we're going to come back to Earth, as I hope I will shortly, then I'd also like to be able to retain as much of the muscle mass and bone mass as possible. So a lot of the experiments we're doing, including one that I'm wearing right now, um, are aimed to figure out all the different things that happen to, for example, the heart. So from, a, uh, from um, the electric signal standpoint, from the muscle strength standpoint, from the volume, the, cardi uh, the, the cardiovascular output, the stroke volume that the heart um, pumps out, all those kinds of things, we're doing studies to, to analyze that. And we do it for a whole host of other things. And um, hopefully we'll be able to apply those here and before too many more years and actually leave low Earth orbit and go to some of these great destinations like the Moon and Mars. Now tell me how the space program has changed for you without the shuttle, because I'm thinking from one perspective, because I've covered so many of the space shuttle flights, it's not in the news, and unfortunately it's that out of sight, out of mind. And, but we still have a lot of projects going on. But I think a lot of people have kind of, I don't want to say they've backed off, but, but maybe they've lost a little of their interest. Well, launches, I mean, well, for I would say one thing. I think it's in the best interest of all of us as people that want to explore space to have as many ways to get to and from planet Earth into space as possible. It just, it's just smart from a redundancy standpoint. The school afforded us the opportunity to, to carry you know, massive car pieces of cargo up to space to be able to stage EVAs and do extensive and complicated robotics work from it. The shuttle just finished up doing the most important job, the thing that it was designed to do all along, and that was to build this unbelievable laboratory in space. Million pounds of uh, space station, and the shuttle was uniquely suited to do that. As we look at going beyond low Earth orbit, um, the shuttle's not the right kind of vehicle to do that. You don't want a vehicle with wings. That's a waste of, uh, of up mass. It's a waste of energy. And uh, what you want to do is have a vehicle that's designed to take for us, for example, the next step beyond low Earth orbit onto the moon and Mars. 
For the time being, though, between now and when we have those vehicles in hand, the things we need to do on space station is to work hard to figure out, uh, to solve all the problems that, that uh, potentially could be major hazards for us down the road. And the shuttle, for all its elegance and capability, isn't the vehicle for that. Now, I've been there and I've watched launches and I've experienced a couple of them myself and, uh, and it's a very moving thing and it's a very powerful thing and, and the state of Florida has contributed an awful lot and the, and the workers at Kennedy Space Center, for example, to make that possible. Um, I hope sooner than later that we're going to have a suite of other vehicles and many of them launched out of Florida to continue American presence in space to continue American access to low Earth orbit. So um, I look at this as the next logical thing. We only have a certain amount of money. We're spending that right now on the things we need to do and the research on board space station, but we're also investing in new vehicles down the road. So, Right. We're talking about the Dragon capsule, the Falcon rockets, the uh, Orion, and some of the other projects. Now tell me about this automated transfer vehicle, because I think a lot of people don't understand is, if you don't occasionally boost the International Space Station to a higher orbit, Earth is constantly pulling it down and would love to drag it back down into the environment. Yeah, that's right. In fact, the space station is kind of in a sweet spot altitude-wise right now. It's at a place where we don't have to expend a lot of propellant to get to it, don't have to expend a lot of propellant to get back down. But it's also in a place, although it's nearly a vacuum outside, behind me here, for example, there's just enough air with the, uh, with the wide expanse of solar rays and, the, uh, and just the, the, uh, the surface area of the space station to gradually slow it down and bring it down. So the space station, left to its own, after a course of you know many months, would re-enter the, the Earth's atmosphere. But we periodically reboost it, and we do that with um, visiting vehicles. It could be the, uh, the automated transfer vehicle, which is a European vehicle. We have Russian progress vehicles. Um, we had the shuttle doing those kinds of things as well. We also have plenty of propellant on board space station to do that. We don't want to take it up really high where it would stay there for a long period of time, because again, it would take us an awful lot of propellant to get to it. So it's, it's in a good place, but we do need to periodically give it, a, give it a little bit of a boost. Yeah, always trade-offs with weight when it comes to space. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck to you folks up there, and may you have a safe return back here to Terra Firma. Al, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for all your years of uh, supporting us and supporting spaceflight, and wish the best to you and your viewers. Thanks for coming aboard today.